hardly a week passes without a new report into Britain's yawning social divide. And yawning is the response from the government and many voters who choose not to believe it, blame the poor themselves, or just don't care that much. Yesterday, the Joseph Roundtree found Aden reported an extra 400,000 children and 300,000 more pensioners falling into poverty since 2013, the day after the Social Mobility Commission resigned en masse, in protest at the government binning its every recommendation. This follows the Institute for Fiscal Studies warning that 37% of children will fall below the government's own poverty line by 2021. Universities pump out facts about poverty, but what's the use if the politics and public sentiment of our times sees a nation blocking its ears? Benefits Street, from the misnamed Love Productions, generated more hate than any statistics about the hard-working poor can ever repair. That's just part of a 40-year post-Thatcher assault on the founding principles of the welfare state. Last week marked the 75th anniversary of the Beveridge Report, remembered as a heroic beacon amid the darkness of the Second World War, later helping Clement Attlee's labor trounce Winston Churchill in the 1945 election. But the spirit of 45 had a more prosaic beginning. Sir William Beveridge, an arrogant, prickly man, was shunted off into a minor job chairing a tidying up operation for sickness schemes. Has any civil servant ever so outrageously exceeded their remit? Employed alongside people in the hardest jobs, I saw them sticking at it for little more than benefits would pay. What emerged in 1942 was a report that not only constructed an entire social security system, but a free health and education service as well. Its dry title social insurance and allied services didn't deter people from queuing outside HM stationary office for a copy. Hard technical reading was embellished with an eloquent opening and conclusion, and it sold 600,000 copies. A revolutionary moment in the world's history is a time for revolutions, not patching, wrote this liberal, who was no socialist. The principle was social insurance you pay in for support in times of need. That moral notion at its core has always chimed with public opinion. Though politicians keep trying to recreate the insurance idea, which lingers on semi-fraudulently in national insurance, from the start it didn't solve many problems. Many, such as pensioners, needed support immediately despite never paying in, so supplementary benefit means tested grew to pay people outside the system. Housing costs were an add-on, then as now, varying too wildly around Britain for a flat rate. There never is, was, or can be a neat universal system. Besides, Beveridge planned for an all-male workforce when a man's wage was enough, now median families need two earners. But ever since Thatcher's 1980s, the Tories have undermined Beveridge's ideas. Nicholas Timmons, whose newly updated book Five Giants chronicles the history of the welfare state, tracks the language change that heralded declining public trust. Welfare state and social security fell out of common usage after Charles Murray, divisor of the word underclass, blamed poverty on moral and character shortcomings he is quoted approvingly again in this week's Sunday Times editorial.